Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is material? The diamond gradient node. Let's go ahead and run through our quick little example. This is our diamond gradient node. You can find it by typing in diamond. And it'll show up under miscellaneous or the gradient section. Now the diamond gradient is pretty simple. As you can see, there is only one input. Now if I unhook our input node, we'll notice this takes a fall off input value, which is a scalar or a vector one, and it defaults to three. So if I go ahead and plug it in, for example, this is going to be our result. I have it on a cube so that way we can actually see what it takes up. Let's put it on a flat plane. There we go. And you can see it's basically going to be a diamond that starts off at our origin point, which is going to be the center, and it goes out based on our fall off value. If we change our fall off value to something smaller, let's say 1, you're going to know it's a much larger value. If we set this to 0, it's basically going to encompass our entire image. If we set it to something much smaller, I'm well, sorry, much larger, 10, we get a much smaller diamond. So the value is basically how much does it fall off? How much of the diamond from the entire image falls off or doesn't exist? Make it 15, we're going to get a much smaller value. And you'll go on and on. Make it 100 and it's pretty much going to be this tiny little speck in the middle. We'll set this back to our default value of 3. Now like you know, like I said, there's only one input, so we could always play with it. We could make something pretty cool, actually. Let's take our diamond gradient, and let's turn this from an opaque to a translucent. And we'll go ahead and plug our actual diamond gradient output into the opacity as well. And then what it's going to do is the white parts will stay white and look solid, and our black parts are going to be more translucent, and we can actually see through it. Now, in terms of our falloff, any parameter can actually be Parameter any any of these can be parameterized and they can be adjusted and they can be adjusted over time using something like a sine wave. So if I was to take and plug this little section of nodes here into our diamond gradient, we can get this interesting little pulsing star all inside of our material. And all I'm doing here, in case you're wondering, is taking our time set to a period of three. So it's going to go from zero to three and back to zero, three, and continue indefinitely using a sine wave to modulate it, using a constant bias scale to give it three, so that way we're not going, for example, if I didn't use my constant bias scale, plugged it directly in, it's going to do this. It's going to go back to our zero value, and because it's a zero value, it's going to take up the entire thing. Constant bias scale adjusts our value by giving it three and starting with there. So basically I'm going to adjust this from three to six instead of 0 to 3, and then we're just multiplying it by our base size, which is 3 itself, and that's plugged into our diamond gradient. Look at this cool little pulsing effect. Nothing was done out of our material. This is all done inside of our material, and it's a nice little way to use our diamond gradient. 